what is up? It's Ruby. Thank you so much for tuning back in and checking out today's video. First of all, I want to say thank you guys so much for the incredibly positive response that I received on my first video and kind of like my new acting series here on this channel. Basically, for those who didn't watch, it was all about kind of how to prepare for your acting headshots. If you haven't watched that video already, definitely go check it out on my channel. But today, I kind of have like the second installment in that series. And today, we're going to be sitting down and talking about how to film a self-tape audition. This is something that as an actor, you're gonna have to do quite a lot. Of course, there's gonna be a lot of auditions where you go in in person, but I cannot tell you guys how many self-tapes I film, even just like over the course of a week. So I feel like this is something that's very important and I knew that I wanted to put it out kind of towards the beginning of this new series on my channel. So without further ado, I'm just gonna dive right into today's talking points and I really hope you guys enjoy. Take a little sip of my soda first because that's healthy. Okay, now we're ready. The first thing that I wanna talk about is the camera. People ask me all the time, well like if I'm gonna be filming self tapes a lot, should I like invest in an $800 DSLR? The answer is no, you should not. Unless it's in your budget and a DSLR camera is something you've been pining after, it's not necessary. All you need is like a solid camera quality. You don't need anything that's gonna look like a movie. Um, I do shoot all of my self tapes on my DSLR, but that's because I have one already. It's because I bought it for my YouTube channel, so I just figure why not use it? But if you have an iPhone, that works just fine. I have so many friends who will just like put their iPhone on a tripod and that's what they will use. So like I said, the camera quality doesn't have to be anything super stellar. However, it does need to be clear enough so that, you know, casting can really see you. Um, but for me, what's more important to me is honestly the audio quality and then the lighting. So as far as audio quality goes, if you have a DSLR, I often recommend also purchasing a mic for it just so that you can get like the most crisp like audio quality possible. If not, and you're just filming on your iPhone, just find a quiet place to film. A solid background is what I always recommend. You don't want anything super distracting. You want casting to be able to focus on you. As far as lighting goes, I always say this, natural lighting is the best lighting. Um, I just find that artificial lighting or if you have like soft boxes or something, sometimes it can just look like way too much. It starts looking more like a production rather than just like an authentic self tape. And for me personally, I just prefer natural lighting because I find that like everything's a bit more true to color. Um, nothing looks super washed out so again they can really see like your features now as far as like your clothing your hair and your makeup goes I always say that it should be clean neat and similar to what you have in your headshot I've had so many people ask me if costumes are necessary they are not necessary in fact please stay away from costumes unless specified just wear an outfit that you feel is really you so like for me I usually wear like a pair of dark denim I'll wear like a cool t-shirt, a denim jacket, and simple accessories. As far as my hair and makeup, I'll usually do like messy waves with the straightener because that's what I have in my headshot and then I'll do just like a really clean makeup look with like a nude lip. But the biggest thing is it should just be clean and allow the industry to see you and who you really are. They don't want to see you like putting on, you know, like this facade because then if they choose to see you in person, they're going to be super confused. This next tip might seem super obvious, but I'm just going to be like really real with you guys. I feel like common sense these days is not so common, so I feel like I just have to say this. If your self-tape is not a monologue or a scene by yourself, meaning there's another character that has lines with you, you must find someone to read the sides with you. I don't wanna hear stories of any of you guys coming back to me and saying, well, I filmed a self-tape and like there was supposed to be another character in it, but I didn't have anyone to film it with me, so I just like paused and like waited for the line to be, you know, spoken, waited for the time, and then like, you know, I popped back in and said my line, like, oh my god, oh my god. That's why I'm making these videos, is so that that does not happen. I know it can be awkward to ask like your friends or your family to help you with the self-tape, especially if they're not in like the acting industry, but I promise you it gets easier with time, and people are usually always super happy to help. They don't have to be a professional actor, they don't have to say the lines like they're like aiming for a Tony Award, because they're gonna be behind the camera, they're not gonna be seen, you just need someone to read the lines with you so that you can like accurately respond to the lines and emote and casting can see how you interact with other people. Also, let me say this too. Um, so let's say that like your scene partner in the side that you're given is a guy and you only have like female friends that are available to film with you that day. 
that's totally fine. That doesn't matter. I cannot tell you how many times like I filmed a self tape where like my boyfriend has had to read with me and he's had to be a female character. That's totally okay. The most important thing is that you find somebody to be your partner in that scene. And this is where it really comes in handy to befriend, you know, people in the theater community wherever you live. So many friends here in New York were like, this is just what we do. Like I'll call them if I need help with my self tape and vice versa. Like as long as you know, they're willing to show up for me, I will absolutely show up for them and like return the favor. Okay, so you have to film a self tape. You get the script and you, you know, you get all the information from casting. The first thing to do before like setting up your camera or calling a friend to help you, you know, film, the first thing that you want to do is read over every single instruction that casting sent along with your sides for your self tape. Do you have to slate? If so, what should the slate include? How should the camera angle be? Are they just looking for like chest up? Do they want waist up? Do they want a full body shot when you slate and then do they want you to tighten in when it's time to actually read the sides? I think a lot of people assume that casting is only interested in like your acting and your, you know, ability to like memorize sides and how well you read them, but truly casting is looking at everything from the moment that the camera turns on. Here's the thing guys, I'm saying this because I care about you all and I've been auditioning for a really long time so I feel like this piece of advice is, you know, helpful and I just feel like I should say it. But if you are just so concerned with like getting your hands on those sides and like starting to memorize them or like, you know, all you're concerned about is just like being the best actor you can be and that's what's gonna make casting wanna hire you. Let me tell you, casting is paying attention to everything about you from the second that you turn on the camera and like the second that, you know, the video starts for them. So if you're so concerned with like, you know, your acting and the sides and you're so like excited to get the sides that you kind of overlook everything else and you don't realize that, you know, they're asking you to like slate a certain way or say something in the beginning of the video, then casting is gonna just assume, oh, okay, I guess she can't take directions because if she doesn't even realize that she's supposed to slate in the beginning of this audition video, what makes us think that she's gonna be able to take direction if she actually books a job? If they're asking you to slate at the beginning of your self tape, which usually they do want you to do, um, that is your one time that you are allowed to look in the camera and introduce yourself. For the rest of the audition, unless otherwise specified in the script, the camera is not your scene partner. Your scene partner that you're speaking to is your scene partner. I know it can be kind of overwhelming and kind of nerve wracking to have like a camera being pointed at you like while you're reading a scene and all you wanna do is just like make eye contact with the lens but that's not gonna help you. Unless you're like auditioning for some sort of like mockumentary film or they say like in the script specifically like this character you know says line into camera. I just wanna say this one more time, I know that I briefly touched on it but like I said costumes are not necessary in a self tape and props are not necessary either. Casting knows that this is just an audition, it is not the actual production, so no need to like go on Amazon in the middle of the night to find like, I don't know, a broomstick if you're auditioning for Hocus Pocus 2 that uh, is hopefully coming out really soon because people keep talking about it. I'm just kidding, but like I said, there's like no reason to go out of your way to find like props and costumes, just you know, show up with yourself. These unnecessary things honestly just add like levels of distraction and once again take away from you and your performance, which is what they should be focusing on. Finally, the last thing that I want to mention is take your time and and film as many takes as you need to get that perfect take. This truthfully is the best thing about a self tape. You know, I love going into the room for an audition and actually like getting to, you know, have one on one time with the panel. But the beautiful thing about self tapes is you can film 50 takes, go through, find the best one, send it to casting, and they'll never know that you filmed 50 takes. This is where it can also get a little dangerous though because for some, if you consider yourself like a perfectionist, I have friends who will like just keep filming and filming and filming and filming. And to be honest, I think that that's a little problematic as well just because then you have like so many clips and it can make you feel really overwhelmed. So for me, usually, usually, I only do about three to four takes when I'm filming a self tape. But if it's something that's like really challenging or I feel like I need more time, the max that I will do is 10 takes. Because when it comes to like the performing arts, there is no such thing as perfection. You know, we as artists, we are always striving for perfection, but it's never something that anyone is actually going to reach. Perfection is impossible. But you do want to get as close to it as possible. So I feel like usually 10, 
10 takes is like a good number. In those 10 takes, you should be able to find one that you feel best represents you and your talents. Also, just a little bonus tip. Um, this is just something that I do in my self tapes. You don't have to do this by any means, but I just want to mention it because I feel like it does really help. At the end of all of my tapes, so like I finish my final scene, I like fade to black. I will always just include one more little clip saying like, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. You know, if you have any additional like requests, please feel free to send them my way and have a great day or something like that. By adding just a personal message that like casting didn't even ask for, it shows them that you're like really grateful for this opportunity and it also once again gives them a little bit of a peek into your personality as well but there you guys have it those are all of my tips and tricks on how to film a self tape audition I really hope you guys did enjoy today's video if you did and you're excited for more videos surrounding like you know tips for the new actor or anything like that please feel free to give this video a thumbs up it really lets me know that you guys want to see more of this type of content please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and help me grow the Ruby Rocks the World family it would mean the absolute world to me and follow me on all my other social media networks if you haven't already the links are always in the down below i hope you guys are having an awesome day night afternoon whenever you guys are watching this and i will talk to you all in my next video okay bye everybody